Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Justice League International from Keith Giffen, J.M.D. Mateus, and Kevin McGuire. So this show has the unique opportunity of exposing stories from 60 years ago or two weeks ago to folk who don't normally read comics. And as a result, you get a lot of unique reactions, which was kind of the impetus behind the show in the first place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get some surprises, but I feel like based on the last 360 so episodes we've done that uh, I, I know where we're going with this. <laughs> this book, this series, is really seminal and important and it was very groundbreaking when it came out. Really? Yes. Justice League International, for those who have the context or the age to remember it, mm. was an important piece of comic book history and changed the industry for superheroes inexorably hmm. from that day forward. What, uh, what era are we looking at here? We're looking at a post-crisis era, the immediate post-crisis era. The Justice League brand slash series used to run from its inception up until the crisis. And when it started, it featured the characters that you would expect to see on the Justice League. Mm -hmm. Batman, Superman, etc. And for whatever reason, the team became crappy as the decades rolled on. Well, they gotta bring new blood in. I, you know, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say need, but... Uh, but no. They could do whatever they want. Yeah. So, like... And, it's, and not, I, it's not real. No, Someone's exactly. Someone's making these decisions, and, 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 and they could put any characters they want. You know, that's funny you should say that, because, like, that is the philosophy that this book would pave the way for in the future, right. but is a casualty of in its inception. To say that DC was in the shitter in the 70s is putting it lightly. <laughs> they were in need of a shakeup, and that shakeup came in the form of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm -hmm. uh, and after Crisis, they're like, let's reboot everything, let's start from zero, and that'll also give us an opportunity to, like, fix the Justice League, mm. which sucks. We've got to get the Justice League working again. Well, because why not? It's our flagship team. It, right. It's the team that everyone knows. Yeah. It, 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 Why did they get crappy in the first place? I don't just, understand. Just lousy editorial, lazy mm -hmm. folks. I mean, naivete, wearing innovation as a, as a cheap suit <laughs> or, or, or creating horse new costume. characters or creating new storylines probably just bumps characters into the foray of yeah. working with the Justice League. Yeah. I don't know how they got to where they were, where like mm. Gypsy was a member of the Justice League, <laughs> but. That's where we were. It's like, we gotta keep changing stuff. We gotta keep it fresh. Yeah, and right. Like, and it's like, yeah, but I don't recognize this team and I don't care about these characters. Mm. Yeah, this character works really well overseas. Right. And, and, and you know, that's funny because making the Justice League International was not a marching order, but rather just kind of an idea that came from the creators of what would, ne what would later be called Justice League International. Mm -hmm. So after Crisis, they had their first major event in the new continuity called Legends which we did on this couch. Mm. And Legends was reintroducing like the larger DC universe to its readers in a way to show you like, these are new characters, but you know them and you'll see where it's going. Mm -hmm. you know, it reintroduces Shazam, where Billy Batson becomes Shazam. You know, like, okay. Gee Willikers, I'm a little boy, but I'm in a man body. You know, like that's... <laughs> right, re that's re how I feel every day of my life. <laughs> Wonder Woman's new. She's fresh off the boat. Hey, I'm pretty and you recognize me. I say that because we did another show called The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Mm. And we did a story from the Giffen, DiMatteis, Maguire era in which everyone was just ogling Wonder Woman. <laughs> yep. And it's just, that's the one attribute that like everyone can agree on for yep. Wonder Woman is she's hot. She's hot. Excuse me, gentlemen, I have to make time with Wonder Woman. Yeah, like, all right, Blue Beetle, what you, Jesus. What are you gonna do? What are you, right, what are you gonna do? You gonna, I, I give you $20 if you could talk to her. Without going hamana hamana hamana. <laughs> I'm not gonna go hamana hamana hamana. I'm gonna go. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess it beats boy 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 boy. Or hubba hubba. Right. So they're reintroducing the characters, and they're like, and we're gonna do the Just League, and we're gonna fix it. Here we go. And and all the editors for the respective characters who would make up the Justice League were like, yeah, but I'm like reintroducing this character to everybody for the first time, so. It'll be confusing if my character is splitting their time between mm. the flagship title of DC Comics and the title they're in. So, like, how about Superman joins the Justice League? No. How about the Flash? 
No. No, I got How plans for him over Wonder here. Wonder Woman. No. <laughs> no, and they all have their own top tier books. Yes, and we're reintroducing them. People will be confused or frustrated or, or, or turned off by the <laughs> idea of, 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 of wondering how they fit in continuity. I guess this was before there were like four concurrent Superman titles. Yes. <laughs> there was, they were all telling different goddamn stories. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they went, oh, Jesus, I guess we could just do anything. Who cares? <laughs> So, Batman's like, I got this under wraps, guys. Don't worry about it. And that's actually true, because what happened was Denny O'Neill felt so bad for the editor of the Just League book, who thought he was going to set the world on fire with this <laughs> reintroduction post-crisis Justice League, he was like, you could have Batman. Because, like, Batman got a soft reboot. Like, all mm. we really did was make Catwoman a hooker. Like, that's, that's the only real change for Batman's history. Yeah. So, like, you, you can have Batman for a little while. <laughs> So Batman is the only Justice Leaguer on the Justice League and Martian Manhunter. Because, like, who gives a shit? We didn't know he was on the team before. <laughs> and when you don't see him, he's definitely there. He's just hiding. <laughs> Look closely, you'll see him. But no, honestly, Jean has always been, like, a founding slash flagship member of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. So, like, it makes sense for him to be there. And, honestly, people are a big fan of Jean. And I get it. Sure, yeah. And so Martian Manhunter's there, too. But, like... Nobody's buying Justice League post-crisis to get the new readers in for John Jones. Mm. You know, but Batman, hey, Batman. Yeah. And we'll put a Green Lantern on there. And they were like, how about Guy Gardner, though? You can't have Hal. You can have Guy. <laughs> Hal is more important. Yeah. How about the worst Green Lantern? I didn't even know he existed at this point. He did. Guy and uh, and he, was, he had a tumultuous upbringing in mm. terms of like getting into the roster you know when he first showed up he was an asshole yeah and uh, and that and never really changed it, it actually it changes in this book mm. and then changes back in invasion but uh <laughs> then eventually he goes through like actual growth because people who really like guy get to write for him and they're mm. like he's interesting uh <laughs> Because, you know, a guy has, like, suffered traumatic brain injuries, and he had, like, a really rough childhood and was beaten by his dad and stuff. So, like, oh. it, it's not so much that Guy Gardner is a dick. It's that one of his personalities is a dick. Uh, he has multiple personality disorder? Yeah. Oh. I did not know that. When was that invented? After this. Oh, okay. Like, during this. Uh -huh. Yep. Like so, we gotta explain it. All right. Well, well, no, they just went. Well, how about this now? That'd be kind of funny, <laughs> and that's really the impetus behind it. So, well, who has more willpower than like one normal person? How about someone with multiple personalities? Yeah, that's that's, that's how he managed. Willpower. That's how he managed to like weasel his way into the into the Green Lantern Corps. It's Come on, I got like five personalities. I got up like here. five guys up here. No. Anyway, so... It sounds like they were just too lazy to naturally evolve the character. They wanted to make him different. Well, no, like, because... Well, it's got to take a lot of time for him to, like, undergo no, personal growth No, they didn't grow him. Stuff. They were just I'll just the create a new character no, it inside was, his brain. It, then I could write that. It that's wasn't what like, I want to It wasn't like it was, like, instead of having him grow and change and become a good person by having his personality flip. No, it was just, it's funny to flip the white switch. Like, right. sometimes he'd be a dick. Sometimes he'll be, like, a little man baby. It's just, ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, that's not funny, though. <laughs> but it was in the book I, I at the time. I can't predict this character or what he's going to say or yeah, do. Yeah, I know. He's crazy. You never crazy. know. Well, as long as he doesn't get bombed on the noggin, he'll be fine. Yeah. Andy Helfer has the unenviable task of editing this book that no one wants to lend their characters to fix. Apparently, every like day or couple of days, Keith Giffen would walk past Helfer's office and just peek in the door and go, Justice League. And then leave. Okay. Like, give me Justice League. That was his pitch oh! for getting Justice League? That's his pitch. Okay. Like, just give it to me. <laughs> and Helfer's like, no, you're Keith Giffen. And you're creepy. <laughs> and you're creeping me out. Well, also, like, no, it's going to be Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern. It's going to be awesome. And then, like, as the character started dwindling, and he was like, oh, fuck. What am I going to do with this? No one's going to want to write this. No one's going to want to do this. And so one day... Given on cue, goes, Justice League is done! And he's like, a what? <laughs> and at that time, Giffen had been an artist who had been accused of plagiarism, so he tried to kind of walk back oh, the art. Oh. And so he's like, well, I guess I'll write then. And so he wrote, I can do that. So I'm like, an artist. Well, he also wrote, but like oh, okay. he, he, he wrote the stories for Justice League, but he also didn't really feel comfortable doing the scripting. Mm. He's like, I'm not really a dialogue guy, which is very apparent in Heckler and Lunatic. <laughs> Helfer's like, okay, I'll call J.M.D. Mateus, who was writing Justice League before the book got canceled and relaunched. 
Okay. And uh, so, and Demetrius, you know, consummate professional and knows how to write dialogue and character and gets all that. He's like, okay, but like, what am I doing? And it's just they would break it. They would break down the story and then. Demetrius would go, okay, that's what he says and she says. And, and and he would like have character ideas, like, well, you can add a panel here and make them and keep it going. But mm-hmm. But yeah. the story was Giffen's. The story was Giffen's and Demetrius gave you the character. You know? Giffen told you what they did, Ugh. but Demetrius showed you how and why. Yeah. Yeah. I, that sounds it, rough because like if you don't understand the characters, right. how are you creating a story where where they're Actions are pivotal to what happens. And, and that's the thing, is that uh, Justice League International has been hailed as, like, this... A revolution. Mm. Because of the execution, and I think it's a consequence of just the weird patchwork mess that <laughs> made the book come into existence. Mm. And because in the 80s, around the time of this book's launching, DC is also making a name for themselves and becoming critically acclaimed mm. for other books. Like... Watchmen right. and Dark Knight Returns. So DC is becoming known for the grim and gritty publisher. Mm. Like we're giving you the groundbreaking, critically acclaimed British mature. author-dominated ma- mature readers yeah. kind of label. Yeah, yeah, look at every, look at all these titles. Look at all, and look yeah. at how freaking dark and real they are. Yeah, we're tackling like real topics. Yes. In yeah, yeah, nuclear war. Yeah. Yep. So okay, and then they did this, which is like. <laughs> <laughs> this is not in any way like that, which is also a breath of fresh air for a lot of people because they're like, mm. I read DC for like, for Superman. What are you doing? Right. And uh, well, and, and also, you're not reading Justice League right now, I guess. <laughs> no. Well, but but chances are you weren't before either. So then they just needed McGuire to come on board, and Kevin McGuire was an unknown artist at the time who worked for Cheap. So they brought him in, and McGuire was like, I'm in. And McGuire added that extra component that makes Justice League International unforgettable. Mm. Because if it had been any other artist, you wouldn't have gotten the perfect chemistry that this title is. And I, I, I'm still saying, I'm standing by this, your guys are going to hate this book. <laughs> but. But. It is perfect. It, it is. It is a, <laughs> well, it, it's perfect for exactly what it is. Right. And it was exactly what DC needed at the time mm. because it was that palate cleanser. It was like, oh yeah, everything's miserable and dark and gritty and it's only going to get worse because like, you know, Gaiman's coming, Sandman's That's... vertigo's on the horizon. Yeah, but here's Oberon, her perturb. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. Oh, who and, doesn't love and, him? And He's Blue whimsy. Beetle and yeah. friggin' uh, Martian Manhunter uh, and Mr. Miracle. Guy and... for the future. G- gold. <laughs> Booster Gold. Booster Gold. Yeah, Booster, Booster gold, gold joins the team too. They launched Justice League as the title Justice League, and they dropped the Of America title. Because forever, mm. it was called Justice League Of America. Right, right. And now they're like, okay, it's not that. So let's call it Justice League. And it will usher in the new era, and after the end of its arc, they will relaunch the title called Justice League International. Okay. Mm. Because they're like, the JLI. The JLI. Mm. So this yep. is just the JL. That's right. Right. That's, That's how right. you get to the JLI. Exactly. Okay. But uh, for expedience's sake, I'm just going to call it Justice League International. Sure. Because uh, this is what I they the were characters. going to have. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that's, it, it's interesting because it is and it isn't because basically what they did was they leaned into the tumultuous nature of this title mm. with the ever-rotating cast of characters. There will be some characters that are consistently there, like Jean, oh, no. but there will also be some characters who will like show up and leave. Like Captain Marvel slash Shazam, right. who will be there and then go, I don't want to do this anymore, and just leave. <laughs> and characters will literally just come in and go, like, I'm here and I don't know why. Black Canary will just be like, hi, Dr. Light is brought in because she is given an unofficial but still legit enough looking Justice League invitation. And so she shows up and she's like, I'm invited too. And they're like, no, you weren't. And she's like, what? And then Maxwell Lord, who's invented for this book, shows up and he's like, I invited her. And they're like, but who invited you? And he's like, myself. And they're like, what? And that's what this book is. They lean into the fact that the cast is rotating, but also the fact that like, okay, so it's a bunch of who gives the shits. Mm -hmm. How about we lean into that? Like, who are these people? And so it's a locker room book about what happens behind the scenes of your superhero comic books. Mm. So it's just about these characters interacting right. with each other, okay. which is a solid ass premise. And it's basically New Avengers. Really, New Avengers would become that. Right, and right, some right. folk would say like, "And Bendis was a ripoff artist." And I'm like, and "Bendis was going to do that no matter what." But <laughs> regardless, when we get into this, they're going to be very unheroic because the cameras are off 
and there's no damsels in distress. They're just at the headquarters. Mm. And so it's just how they interact. It's just like an episode of Big Brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's Big Brother Justice League edition. There you go. And then by the time they were like, oh, fuck. Like Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern. Well, our Green Lantern. They're not coming to the party. <laughs> and DC went, oh, yeah. And uh, we acquired these like Charlton characters. So make sure Blue Beetle's on the team, too. And they're like, who the fuck is Blue Beetle? <laughs> Well, that's, what you, that's your job. Uh, yeah. You're going to you define Blue Beetle in the yeah. DC universe. That's right. You're going to define DC's Blue Beetle. You tell me, man. I don't know. I don't know. You're the artist. Leave. Fart. It just make sure he's named Blue Beetle and looks kind of like this. Looks like the character that, that's we, what we, that we bought. That's what we bought. Yep. So it's got to be that. It's but, be that. But other than that, it could be anything. It could be anything. The opening of Justice League is Guy Gardner gets there first. Because he is convinced... Gets where? He gets to the headquarters. Oh, okay. They'll go from being an American institution to being an international institution that is officially sanctioned by the UN mm. and as such will have headquarter embassies in every UN country across okay. the world. Right. So it's like, oh, well, we need a headquarters. Thankfully, there's one in China or there's one in like Belize. So oh, they just go. add a wing on to every UN building. Right. <laughs> Usually they're not here, so we use it for foosball. Exactly. <laughs> because it's got to be awesome and it's got to have all these big computers and stuff. So like, yeah, no, we're going to use this room. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> it's like our break room, except when they're here. <laughs> yeah. 364 days a year at the break room. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Quick, we have an emergency in China. Uh, everyone cleared out. <laughs> Yeah. They're coming, they're coming! <laughs> Quick, put out your drugs! <laughs> <laughs> so, Guy Gardner gets to the headquarters first. Because he's like, number one, I'm on the Justice League. Because, Already? Because I'm establishing that I'm going to be on the Justice League. Oh. Well, there has to be a Green Lantern, doy. Yeah, and number two, I'm going to lead it. Because... I'm the best. And there's nobody else here. And there's nobody so else here, I and decide. so... I'm here first, I call dibs. That's right. <laughs> and people show up, and they're like, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What's drawing them here? They you say people show oh, up, like, why? The why end of Legends. There? At the end of the event uh, Legends, okay. they're like, we need a Justice League, and Superman's like, yes, we do. Fuck off. Yep, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely need a Justice League. You and should form. Literally, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and The Flash are like, we should have a Justice League. And Batman's I like, see. oh, okay. So he um, invited people. Yeah. Well, more like... Or put out like an open casting call. Yes. Uh, no, because sometimes some of them are invited from clandestine groups. Others mm. are brought from like the government. You know, it's <laughs> so it's generally it's known a free for all. That there is a Justice League, and they know where they're gonna go hang out soon. Right. So people just show up, but there's no like curating. No, they think there is because people show up and go like, "Who invited Guy?" And it's like he did. There's no plan. So Black Canary shows up because Black Canary was a member of the JSA and the JLA. So I'd be like, oh, cool. Look at this continuity. Here we go. And Black Canary's a fun character. Uh, and we've like recently established like some like, advanced powers for her. It's just her rah. But, you know, that being said. Or right. Scree. Or Scree. So Black Canary shows up and she's like, oh, no. Like, she's immediately reconsidering joining the Justice League. Because Guy, Guy Gardner's the only one there. Well, yeah, it's her and Guy. Right. Yep. And then it's a like, boom no. tube opens and Mr. Miracle and Oberon show up. Who's Oberon? Oberon is... Scott Free slash Mr. Miracle's agent. And he thinks it'd be a great PR move for Mr. Miracle to join the Justice League. And so he does. Right. And Oberon's from here? Yeah, Oberon's an Earthling. Right. A human, okay. if you will. Right. He's not like, you know, from the mystical Shakespearean land of Midsummer Night's Dream. No, nor, nor is he from the <laughs> Lollipop Guild or any other <laughs> short jokes he would like to make. He's not from Middle Earth. <laughs> I was going to say he's not from New Genesis. Ah, uh, no, he's not. Okay. But uh, Guy will make nonstop short jokes at Oberon's expense. That's the shtick for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so immediately, you know, like Oberon hates Guy, and, like, you know, you were already on board for that else, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Shazam shows up, or, or Captain Marvel, and he's like, holy moly! And Guy's like, okay, so I'll be making fun of that guy for the rest of the book. <laughs> he just said, holy moly. Yeah, because he's, cause remember, he's a 14 year old boy mm. in the 80s. We're talking the 80s. We're not talking like, gee willikers, Beeb. I know, but he definitely <laughs> talks like that. And I was like, well, okay. He was invented in the well, 40s or something, but, right? Because for me, I'm like, right, because Billy's eight. And it's like, no, he's 14. I'm like, 14? He'd be like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a comic book, though, so he's not going to he's not gonna say that. No, but like other people say advanced stuff. I don't know why mm. Captain Mar Well, it's, he's, he's doing that to show you that he's a little boy in a man's body. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> so the team shows up and, you know, it pretty much quickly forms thereafter. We got Captain Mar. Everybody we said on the cover. Yeah. And Jean's there and he's like, oh, 
Thought it was bad before. But here we are. <laughs> you are well, that's supposed to be. Because he, he pulls up, like, you know, the stats cards on the previous oh, league. Oh, yeah. And he's and just like, like, these are all, like, threes out of sevens. Like, what am I supposed to do yeah. with this? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, in D.C., Maxwell Lord is... A oh, Washington, D.C. Yes. Yeah. Not in DC Comics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Maxwell Lord, new character created for this book, and for this the is the debut, debut right here. Debut Maxwell of Maxwell Lord. Lord. Okay. Maxwell Lord the Fourth. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you will. There were three other Maxwell Lords before me. Yeah, but they're not clones. He's just a regular guy. <laughs> uh, but Max is a bureaucrat, a businessman. He is. He's an indictment of what Giffen and Demetrius think corporate America looks like. Mm -hmm. He's like a yuppie he's, or something. He's a yuppie. He's That's already exactly the, what he he's is. He's already the fourth. Like he inherited all of this stuff <laughs> from his family legacy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Max is an opportunist, and he does things for seemingly no reason, but they imply that there are grander plans and machinations at work, mm. and then we'll retcon what those will be later. But. <laughs> Rest assured, in this book, Max does stuff just to benefit Max. Because Max is just a one of those goddamn 80s yuppies your parents are complaining all the time about. <laughs> but, or are. Or are, yeah. Hey. But, but, uh, but Max has plans for the Justice League. And basically, he's, I think he's, just, he's going to use and manipulate the Justice League in its volatile state to propel himself into status and allow him to... Inf influence other uh, other areas of the world. Right. He also has the innate ability to influence other people, and whether that's a superpower or not is kind of in question at this point. Okay, because I was going to say, if he doesn't have superpowers... Right. He's just... No, I he's get just, Oberon is like, Mr. Miracle's agent. Yeah. That's why we let him in the building. Right. Why but, do we let but, him what, Lord what about in? you? I, I think this isn't, just, a, this isn't an invitation to like restructure the business, man. Yeah. We're looking for team no, players. No, but it is. There's also no revenue here. No. Well, <laughs> except they're government subsidized, so yeah, ah. there is revenue here. Oh, so he's trying to tap into that government spigot. I think he is, yeah. <laughs> Apparently he's the only one who thought of it. Yeah. Well, because, you know... Or he's just the best. I think so he's just... He's the he's, one they let he's, in. He's the first one to do it. <laughs> yes. So he senses that there's, like, a an opportunity here because the league was... It was in shambles, in shambles or never existed, or ne depending or, on what kind of version or, of Because anyway. crisis just happened. Yep, it's and, like, ah, oh, okay. Crisis just happened, and then we did an event where we were like, the Justice League sucks, but here's the new league, and it also sucks. <laughs> so Max shows up, but he... Well, Max is Max is planning things. Max will mm. eventually show up later. Okay. And, oh, uh, yeah, so he doesn't show up right yeah, now, and, but we see him now. Yeah, okay. and he does have the same thought as you, where he's like, yeah, I don't have superpowers, I'm not a superhero. That's why he uses a superhero to get through the door. Hmm. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, meet your newest member of the league, and also I'm representing him, and also I now run this shit. <laughs> and I guess the so Justice I got the League big is ideas. Just, yeah, and they're just like so polite, they're not going to be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, and also like, well, what? I mean, he could say whatever he wants. Right. So like, far, none of these people seem polite. No, that's true because immediately everyone just starts yelling at each other. Like, we get everyone in the room, and they're all like. Basically, Guy is like, I'm the biggest jerk in the room! And everyone just, like, jockeys for position and <laughs> argues and piles on Guy for being such a jerk. The yep. whole thing falls apart. Oberon tries to, like, choke hold Guy Gardner. Oh, jeez. And then, and Batman and Dr. Fate are outside. They're on their way in. And Dr. Fate's like, what are you doing here, Batman? And Batman's like, what are you doing here, Dr. Fate? What the fuck do you want? You're not a fucking Just Leaguer. Show your goddamn helmet. Who are you to ask me what I'm doing here? What right? The fuck? I'm goddamn Batman. I buy and sell characters like you. What are you talking about? But basically, you know, Batman's like, are you going to join or not? And he's like, nah, I'm going to pop in once in a while. I'm going to be in an arc from this story, and he's like, fan-fucking-tastic. What are you even doing here, man? So I can't believe I gotta create whole new files on everybody else. <laughs> new ways to take down the Justice League. Yeah, so Batman and, and, and Fate arrive at the meeting room, and ever it's just, it's just a, it's just it's pandemonium. Just a brawl, yeah. And Dr. Fate's like, I'll use magic to make this stop, and Batman's like, please. <sighs> and then Batman just walks through them, and they all just part, like the Red Sea. <laughs> like, the, the, the commotion just gets more and more diminished until Batman just zeroes in on Guy. And it's just, like a big guy throwing people out of the way in a fight to yeah. get to somebody, but Except instead of throwing... They just, just move presence. because he's just so big. <laughs> he's like, oh, Batman. Oh, Batman's here. Oh, Batman. Right. Batman. Oh, Batman. wow. No, a, 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 a real superhero. <laughs> no offense, everybody. But he just <laughs> Is it like Guy doesn't like see him, like his back's turned, and he's like freaking out on someone, everyone else yeah. sees him, it's like, oh, shit. Like yeah. the teacher comes in, yes. and that one kid's turned around. Literally that. Ball. And Batman just stares down Guy, and he goes, sit down. And Guy is like, eh, okay. Kevin Maguire is a natural, a masterclass at 
human expressions. Mm. They're great. No one had ever seen their favorite superheroes look like this before. Which is another reason why this book is so celebrated and why mm. it was so catching when, yeah. it, when it when People it can emote. Yeah. And Maguire can actually portray it. And... Like all of the emotions that Guy Gardner is showing us. Yeah. yeah he's he, angry. He's concerned. He's disappointed. Yeah. And we see that throughout. And it's kind of fun to see basically your favorite superheroes actually look like people. Right. I did an emotion master class. I did a lot of studying. I, he's just, he's just really good gonna at it. Everyone's going to emote. Right. Yeah. So Batman calls the meeting and he's like, we're the Justice League. Get used to it. I yeah. will. Right. I Look... I gotta get used to a lot here, so you can all get used to it too. <laughs> yes. But no matter how hard you think you have it, Black Canary Trust me. dealing with Guy Gardner, it is I can deal with me. both of you. Exactly. <laughs> I have no continuity with you. Uh, Batman, this is John here. Uh, I was here originally too. Shut up, John. <laughs> yeah, keep it quiet, Martian. So Kimi Hoshi, aka Dr. Light, another female superhero from the DC Universe. Mm. She's at the UN building. She was approached by a shadowy figure. It's Maxwell Lord. Maxwell Lord gives her her like yeah. communicator invitation to the Justice League. She's to create like, Mega Man and fight Dr. Wily. No, that's not that Dr. Light. Nor is it the Dr. Light who raped Sue Dibney. Yeah. Uh, this is, I was going to say, isn't that a bad guy? Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there were two Dr. Lights. One's a superhero woman and the other's a supervillain guy. And they both have the same costume. And at one point after the after oh, the that's raping, Kimio Kimio's Kim, Kim like, I should probably change my costume. <laughs> yeah. You think? Well, why do I need to change my costume? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So she gets the invitation, and so she's like, "Cool, I guess I'll go." Meanwhile, the UN is going to be under attack by terrorists, <laughs> domestic terrorists, but terrorists in the same. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's going to be well because like we see like it? bad guys ah, okay. kind of like infiltrating and arriving with with, with assault weapons. They and, look and like stuff. they're being attacked by hippies. They're not. Uh, they look That's... like wrestlers or GI Joe. Yeah, like characters. They look like they're being attacked by characters. Yeah, so Batman yeah. gets a call on the big board from Doctor Light, who's like, "Yo, there's terrorists here. You got to come down to the UN." And Batman's like, "Cool. I guess we're up." Hmm. Let's right. go. Why don't you take care of them, Dr. Light? Right. Aren't you a superhero? Except there's like, there's just too many dudes of with them. guns, right? Yeah, like, but there, there might be collateral damage. Like, uh, this is a job for the Justice League. Okay. So, the Justice League falls in line. And, like, Batman is an interesting character throughout this thing because he, he, he constantly has, like, this air of superiority and... Confidence? Confidence. Yeah. Because he's like, I've got this. So, he just, he just throws his weight around. He's always like, sit down. Shut up. You'll do it my way. Mm -hmm. He has no plan. <laughs> like right. it is all an act oh okay and right. there's no moment where Batman's in the bathroom like oh fuck Bruce we're gonna keep this together okay we got this we got this <laughs> just have to read Alfred's note from lunch you I believe in you this. you can do this <laughs> <laughs> but there might as well be and this would be the book to have that in there mm -hmm. but Batman is he is just twisting in the wind he has no fucking idea what to do with this team mm -hmm. but he's he's being a leader he's showing confidence and yes. he's not letting on that he doesn't know what he's doing right in but the hope that like it'll work out but he's also being a lousy leader because he's not giving them the opportunity to grow express themselves ah. or or lead themselves he's just mm. like shut up sit down do this do that I see and then they don't pan out you know he's like follow my, my lead and then his lead sucks and then they're like Okay, and he's like, okay, next mission. And they're like, but the last mission really, really blew. Like, what the hell? Yeah. That was all your fault, though. Well, it blew because you're terrible. You didn't yeah. follow it my instructions because, the letter. It yeah. blew because these are the characters on the cover. That's why it blew. Right. So he's not he's not like training them. Like, they need training. Yeah. He's treating them like they're a well-oiled machine. Yes. And they will just fix everything, and they're, they're, they're not. Which is kind of cool. I guess that is like a, a, a theme of this book, because mm. it's like, I am the only, outside of John, original Justice Leaguer. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one you want to see on the Justice League. Right. And Usually Superman doesn't need me to like babysit him. Right. <laughs> and But we have Superman here, essentially. We've got Captain Marvel. Yeah, but he's right. a child. But he's a child. He has no idea what to do. He's a dumbass. Yeah, but he gets to learn. But he's still... <laughs> his power should be the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, roughly. Yeah, that's the thing. But like Batman doesn't want to teach him anything. No, well, he like. doesn't even know he needs to. Yeah, he's not even aware enough of what's happening. It's like, you're superheroes. You're just... You're yeah. supposed to, it's just supposed to work. Yeah. Usually I just show up. He like, sold a bill of goods is what's happened. He, they're like, they're like, lead the Justice League. He's like, you got it. He gets there. He's like, oh, fuck. It's Muppet Babies up in here. <laughs> the UN thing goes 
go, goes ridiculously. You know, there's a terrorist. He's up there. He gets on the, the podium. You know, he's like, ah, justice for everybody. I got da, da, da. I got a bomb. I'm going to blow myself up. I'm going to kill everybody here. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Why? Oh, that's what that is. Because it's was... an asshole. Like, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, each, each issue is a different story arc, you know? And it's just showing you a snapshot. Like, what matters isn't necessarily even the superheroics. That's why it's, like, so lousily handled. Right. Like, uh, I don't know, so there's a disturbance at the UN. Yeah. Right. And, they, and they, they know. Like, we get their names, we learn their motivations, but who gives a shit? Uh, I see. You want to read it? It's in the description. It's right, great. Like, right. And you should, because every, every, not... every true comic book fan should read JLI. It's, mm. it's, it's just to see where it all came from, to go like, wow, that's kind of... It's one of those things where it's like, you know, people learn where the thing they like comes from. Right. Or you can see, oh, I've seen the origin of some like right. common like, themes or tropes in comics. It may seem like tropey and antiquated, but like that's because they did it first. Right. They invented it. They invented it. So oh, okay. it's going to be a little clunky 30 years removed. Right. Okay. So, you know, Batman's like, uh, Kimmy, why would you call the Justice League? You're not a Justice Leaguer. And she's like, I got, invi- I got an invitation. He's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> okay, no one got invitations. Yeah, well, actually, none we of these didn't people got them. invitations. Right. Yeah. Everyone just showed up. Yeah. yeah, but like, she shows the, you know, eventually that'll come up. And she's like, I got the invitation right here. And they're like, oh, it's, some, it's, it's a poor copy. And then Mr. Miracle is like, actually, it's a great copy. Like, we're going to steal things from this thing. It's, it's that good. And that's how good Maxwell Lord is. Uh, so they, they defeat the terrorists. Hmm. And it is revealed that the, the main guy who's got the, the suicide bomb... Mm-hmm. He was going to trigger his bomb, but it didn't work. Oh. And it's implied that Maxwell Lord set those guys up in the first place. Right. It was all a pretext to get... To see the Justice League in Dr. action White and to get them... On the team. Yeah, and get Dr. White on the team. Because she was his foot in the door. Yeah. I was wondering when you said that she called, I was like, is this Maxwell Lord's plan? Right, and it is, yeah. Because what, what are the chances? Yeah, exactly. That she would happen to be ground zero for an attack on the UN right and after the, Maxwell Lord is trying to, you know, trick her into thinking she was invited on the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's kind of clever. Yeah. And I love it because the, the terrorist is like, it didn't blow up. Ah, and he just shoots himself. Oh shit! I was gonna kill myself no matter what, but like I'm not going to jail. Also, uh, if it had been real, a whole bunch of people would have died, and they would have failed really hard. Yep. So th- then the next issue is just like they go back to base and they argue with each other again, and that's About gonna how be the terrible that went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, they they start I mean, out by yelling at Kimio for like daring to show up and brandish this invitation like she's right. a member. Right. She's like, I am a member. What are you talking about? It's, I'm here, aren't I? I'm Look at the invitation. Right. Uh, I see around me people who are members of the Justice League, and I'm here in the building as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I'm not on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not a bad guy. I should be. I'm. I'm in. Right. I, exactly. <laughs> should, I mean, look at this team. You need somebody. Yeah, wh- plus. On what basis am I not on the team? Right. The fucking Blue Beetle is on the team. Yeah. Like, how, explain to me how that works. <laughs> so. You know, Guy uses the commotion to complain about Captain Marvel and how silly he is. He calls mm. him Captain Whitebread. Oh. That's his, it's his nickname for him. That really gets under Billy's, you know, skin. Yeah. Makes hey, him sad. hey, I'm not... I like white bread! <laughs> <laughs> he That's might why as well you're say that white bread. Exactly. He might as well say that shit, but he's basically just like, well, I'm Captain White Bread. <laughs> uh, <laughs> new villain of the week for this, for this episode is uh, the Gray Man. Uh, the Gray Man, uh, he doesn't look like that. He's just like an old man. But, uh, he has gray hair. Yeah. The Gray Man... And, and, and gray eyes. I have gray eyes. <laughs> Let, Let me see, see that, that sheet. <laughs> The gray man is like this old man that is on this kind of like island and he's and he, and he sees the world as gray. He has no like vibrance or life or happiness in his in his heart. Dr. Fate shows up and he's like, "Hey, you belong here." And the gray man's like, "Fuck you." And then Dr. Fate's like, "All right, bye." <laughs> you belong here? Yeah. Like on this island alone? Yes. Yeah, and the okay. reason is because the gray man is like an occultist who tried to tap into slash interact with the Lords of Chaos and Order, which is just like a nebulous entity of, of, of beings that, you know, handle the, 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 the random chaos and order of the universe. Right. And, okay. uh, the were, daily shenanigans or goings on. Yes. To what end? Uh, he, just for exploration's sake. He's, oh. he was, it seemed like it was kind of benign. He was like, I just want to know. And uh, they were like, how dare you ask? And so right. he's, he's, you know, it's very much like a, like kind of like a god. Yeah. Yeah, you like, looked upon like, the unlookable, and now you are banished. Yes. Yeah. yeah you dare to, to to cross into that threshold, and uh, so he's he's 
he's doomed. And so the Gray Man, whose name is not important, nor is it established, uh, he is kind of like doomed to make duplicates of himself and send those out into the world to collect dreams that then can be used for the Lords of Chaos and Order. He's like a messenger or a, or a gopher for them. Oh, so they like co-opt him. Yes. Like, and for for your punishment mm-hmm. for daring to try to talk to us, you now work for us. Yes, and so he's trapped there and he hates it. Okay. Uh, and so his motivation is... <laughs> he's, he's like, there's nothing here to mate with either. Right. How am I supposed to make copies? <laughs> no, he just makes them. Like, they just they just, gen- they just, they just manifest. spontaneously manifest. Yeah. Oh. And they're just of himself. But uh, That's boring. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. But <laughs> he has his own arc. The magic-based arc that happens later. But for yeah. now, let's get into the other story, mm. which is that basically, like, an alternate, uh, an alternate dimension... De facto Justice League, whose world was destroyed by nuclear war, Ooh. enters our world in the early to mid 80s at the height of the Cold War and is like, screw nukes, we're going to save this world since we couldn't save our own. Now, you say in the early 80s, like in the in, 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 in the past of this book that's no, happening right like now? No, it's happening right now. Oh, okay. That's when like, this book was written. This book is being written during the Cold War, right. during the USSR, okay. and so, yeah. Uh, so we meet these three heroes who can speak any language when they encounter them. And bug out their eyes. Oh. Yeah, well, he's, that's how to show how intense he is. Oh, when you said, like, for, like, a Justice League, I thought you meant, like, a mirror universe. No, well, no, it's, 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 a, it's a mirror like... universe in terms of, like, they had nukes, they had America, they right. had Russia. Like, right, right, right. But not that there's people who are, like, one to one. You with a mustache. Exactly. Or me with a mustache, right. you with that Nor one. is it, like, the crime syndicate. These right. are just superheroes okay. <laughs> of their own. Yeah, yeah. it's Maleficent, uh, the uh, Guinness World Book r- Record guy, and Pigeon Boy. <laughs> yeah, it's the Silver Sorceress, Wajina, and Blue Jay. Mm. And they can understand languages when they first encounter them because that's the only way that, that they'll be able, able to, to communicate. Well, with, that's with the us. only way that they can create an international incident in Russia, so the Just League has to go there. Uh, Virginia, by the way, is a word that means like Australian Aboriginal, like God. Oh, huh? so anyway. Okay, it's just. Dematteis is like, ho ho, oh, I read a book. I know something about Australia. Yep. I and, went on a, a vision quest. Yep. And Blue Jay, I look stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a bird man. Yep. And I can fly, because you can see I have wings. Scream. <laughs> like, there's like, that's mine. <laughs> I say scream. How oh, dare you. She would kick his ass. <laughs> so these three heroes attack a nuclear missile base in a country called Bialya. And Bialya is basically just one of those... Not Bagalia? No, no not Bagalia. <laughs> but uh, Bialya is like one of those like Soviet nation states. Right, it's like a satellite state. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, he, they, they, they take apart a couple of nukes and then like... Ruman Harhavti is the leader of this country. He's a, he's a general in charge of this country. Okay. So it's a military state. Yeah. Right. And he like glad hands and schmoozes with these superheroes. He's like, I am in. Like, whatever you guys want. You want to be our... our you you want to get rid of nukes? Cool. Yeah, me too. That's why I have all these. <laughs> to get rid of them. Uh, and he, he... I collect them for disposal. Right. And, and he, put them in silos ready to launch at any moment. <laughs> yeah. Those are containment facilities yeah. that just can only hold one each. Yeah, he's the fucking Grinch. <laughs> there's, a, there's a light on this nuke that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it back to my workshop, my dear. I'm going to fix it back there and then bring it back here. <laughs> okay. So they go and they... Uh, and because... Because Batman doesn't want to spend one red cent on this horseshit team, <laughs> they use Ted Kord's uh, advanced technology and money from Kord Industries and the the bug, which is just a flying saucer in the shape of a fucking frog that they call a bug, mm. that they use to fly around everywhere. Oh, that's and a bug. It's got six legs. It does, yeah, but it looks a lot like a frog. Some of, but not most of, the action or the story is punctuated by a convenient plot device character named Jack Ryder, who is a TV news correspondent who's been in the books before. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we know Jack. Yeah, but Jack Ryder, uh, he is very critical of this Justice League. He's like, these people are lame and stupid, and they're terrible, and they're they're going to get people killed, and mm. I hate them. Oh, and, so that sounds like an excellent uh, invitation to become part of the Justice League, Jack. Exactly. Uh, he will not, but he is a superhero or super villain what? antihero. He's the Creeper. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Think I- I don't know what that means. I I We've that. seen the creeper before Probably. on GDU. Yeah, no. he he looks like the Joker, but he's yellow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. and he's also a news anchor. Yeah, that's his identity. Oh, uh, Jack Ryder was like uh, looks like a Geraldo or an investigative reporter of his era. Uh, he took on some criminals that were too big for him to handle, and they threw him into some chemicals that turned him into 
the Creeper. Oh, so he's literally just the Joker, but with like a slightly different profession. Uh, I mean, he hasn't been called the Joker. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he is the Joker though. <laughs> he can't help himself. Uh, it's like like the Joker, but, but he can turn it off. <laughs> uh, he can turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. Only he has an alternate identity. Though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's called professionalism. So uh, the bug enters like Russian airspace, and they get called, and they're like, "Leave." And Batman's like, "Okay, yeah, I've got this. Let's turn the fuck around." <laughs> and so they do. Uh, like, <laughs> oh no, yeah. Russia doesn't want us to come in. Well, I guess we have to go. I guess we'll just listen to them. And then they spend like several days in the bug, like just like in a holding pattern, waiting to figure out what the hell to do next. Which is like to say, yeah, these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. Ted, you have a bathroom in this thing. Yeah, no. are they like? Are they like? They have to awaiting like issuance of visas so they can enter the country. More or less. <laughs> yeah. So they've been there for like nine hours. Okay. That's how long we've been in there? Yeah. Blue Beetle basically says something like, "I, I don't even know how long we've been here hovering in Bialian airspace," and Batman says, 9.2 hours." <laughs> and Blue Beetle goes, "Thank you, Mr. Spock." <laughs> Yeah, and good, uh, and Batman's just like, spare me the humor, Beetle. We have no time for this. <laughs> and then uh, they get a blip on their radar that is the three superheroes they're going to encounter. <laughs> and uh, and Batman says, well, Blue Beetle, can you follow them in a distance that like won't get us noticed by the Russian you know government? And he's like, oh, sure I can. And he goes, well, then, Mr. Sulu, warp seven. <laughs> Batman's a Trekkie. Oh, That's canon. Man. There's a thousand like it, but I kind of just wanted to throw yeah. it out there because it's yeah. like Batman is not a total humorless dick. He makes a couple of jokes in this book, right? Because like literally everyone in this book is a clown, <laughs> uh, well, except for Batman. He, but like Batman will be like, <laughs> but like he doesn't find any of this enter- entertaining. Right, right. He's like, well, you know, I'm just uh, I gotta get through it. I'll know? joke so around I, with I you guys make... because you look like you use humor as you know a, a bonding thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> Apparently, this is what these people do: is mm-hmm. you know they become more familiar through, through uh, their levity. Jest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting invited to birthday parties on this Justice League. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, the last time I laughed, I was stabbed by the Joker and had friggin' neurotoxin coursing through my veins for a week and a half. I lost Jesus ten pounds. Christ. Jesus, you are the wettest of blankets. <laughs> so of course, they get noticed. They get attacked by Russia's Rocket Red League. Because there's a there's a character Team Rocket League. They're, they're the Rocket Reds. The Team, Reds Team Rocket League just plays soccer with cars. Rocket Red will eventually join the Justice League, but not until the end. So it doesn't oh, matter. Okay. Uh, do they attack the uh, the bug? Yeah, yeah, they attack because the it's bug. nuclear powered. No, because they're because they're invading Russian no, airspace. They detect the them on radar. Yeah. <laughs> because as far as everyone else is concerned, they're the they're the Justice League of America. Right. Right. It's like, you don't have any business here. Mm-hmm. No, no, we said we're Justice League International now. I mean, we haven't said that yet, but we're going yeah, we're to. Going, we were planning to say that. Though. Oh, definitely. So that no, means no we they go- were not. They haven't established <laughs> their Justice League International yet. No, but they might say that to try to get in the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just about to, we were just about to make the announcement. Exactly. So you can let us in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is the uh, UN out on this already? Uh, we're getting there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the wheels are in motion. Mm-hmm. We saved a UN. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the three heroes from wherever the hell fake made up country go uh, attack the the Red Rocket League or whatever because they want to take down like the nuclear right uh, all nuclear because Chernobyl just happened and so we're gonna do that again uh, and ah. so you know the, the the plant's gonna have a nuclear meltdown everyone's oh, no. gonna die and Batman just like they they land right when the when the when the reactor's about to go critical and like this image of freaking Mister Miracle just being like. We are so fucked at Batman being like, you gotta snap out of it! You can boom to us all out of here, right? Batman's like, I don't want to die! It's a foreign country! With you assholes! Wood Wood Genia goes into the reactor and he he saves everybody. But at at the expense of, not his life, they say that like his life signs are dim, but like he's still okay. Or at the very least, he's not dead. Yeah. But uh, his life signs are dim. Does he also make a Spock reference and be like, "You Blue Jay, this has been my truest friend." <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't wh- get that moment. No. What does What does he do? Like, wh- how does he solve the problem? <laughs> he goes in, and then comes out. I stopped the, the meltdown. I stopped it. I talked Everyone it down. Everyone is safe. That's what he says. We spend fewer panels on this than we do with Guy Gardner. Flirting with every character in this book. So, that's just, the writers just, ah. I, I don't know how nuclear reactors work. I didn't, I, didn't, I don't know. I also it. don't know how to stop them. I know yeah, they need to be them. stopped. I know that it, it's real bad if they do. I'm, I'm qualified to write about them, but I'm not going to, you know, describe them in any detail or no. explain how this happened. I've stopped it. Yes. Cool. There. Yes. 
Pay no attention to the explosion behind me. That is the dissipation of my saving it. Yeah. It's yep. fine. That's a side We're effect. We're all dying. Everyone go no. home now. Skeletons. Uh, so the, the team having succeeded? <laughs> I mean, the team didn't do the, it. Yeah, no, they didn't do anything. They fought against a foreign nation and then had their asses saved by a character from another, from another dimension. You know, if they'd gotten there maybe nine hours sooner, mm. you'd think maybe they, they could have been. I'm sure that's their explanation. Certainly. Well, if we'd been here Oh, nine they don't hours even bother. <laughs> that's, that's Adventure's over. We already did that. Right. So when they arrive at the Just League headquarters, Maxwell Lord's already there, and he's like, here's my sales pitch. Booster Gold? What? He's from the future, and he's got a neat power suit, and he's How cool. How did he be Booster Gold? He, what about uh, Kimio? We, we do a jump cut, where the League's just <laughs> hanging out in the headquarters, and they're just looking up Maxwell Lord's file, because they're like, I don't trust this guy. Yeah. I don't trust the gold guy. And because he's the guy who clearly must have brought in Kimio in the first place, she's got to go in the other room with those two. Mm. So all of them are relegated to the other room. And Do they say, how long have we been waiting in this next room? About nine hours. Right. <laughs> Let them know what it feels like to be a real member of the Justice League. So, you know, they're, they're just... They're just standing in the other room, like, just, just waiting. Right. And, uh, you know, Maxwell Lord is just like, we've got this. I know what I'm doing. I'm a okay. master manipulator. And Kimio's like, fuck all of this. Like, fuck Doesn't them. Doesn't seem like you've got fuck this. you. Like, this is, I, I thought I was a real member of the Justice League, and yeah. it turns out you just used me for no reason out of nowhere. I quit. And so she just leaves. She so the League finally, like, opens up the room, and they're just like, okay, so no. It's a no, guys. It's a no, <laughs> Max. You can't to have this contract. This may be. However, uh, if you get home, there will be an invitation to uh, Bruce Wayne's ball. <laughs> you can See, join that. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, because Max does eventually get his way, and I know exactly how he does. Mm. He looks them in the eye, and he gives them a firm handshake. Because <laughs> it's 1985 oh, or whatever. That is how you get the job you want. You have a well-printed CV. Mm. You bring that shit to your job of choice. You don't leave until they give you that job. Until you speak to the manager. Oh, man. And you look them in the eye, you give them a firm handshake, and you will make $100,000 a year, I promise you. I, this man gets it. Yeah. He didn't want to leave, yeah. mm -hmm. and he gave me a good firm handshake. Yep. I like that. Didn't gust take no for an answer. Didn't take no for an answer. That's yep. right. That's, that's a straight a real shooter with upper management written all over. <laughs> Boomer jokes aside, uh, Booster Gold is like, I I'm going to go outside. Yeah, no, this sucks. Because this sucks. Because like, I need to get rejected by the fucking D squad of the Justice and Maxwell League. Lord, who is nobody, being like, hey, hey, hold, on, hold on, Booster. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa Booster, we're not, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't know you, that man. Exactly. That's exactly it. And so Booster goes outside, and wouldn't you know it? Like, there's throngs of reporters, probably called by Max Lord, uh, and they're like, Booster Gold, Booster, Booster, what's it like to be on the team? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> And then the Royal Flush Gang shows up and they attack Booster Gold. Oh, jeez. And uh, so the League is like, hey, oh, we've shit. seen these guys once. Yeah, they've been around. I think we <laughs> saw them in a cartoon. I they, do not remember they, this they are They are uh, most famously characters in the Batman Beyond cartoon show. Mm. And then later the Justice League cartoon show as well. But they are established comic book characters. They're also just so stupid. Yeah. They're playing card-based villains. Yeah, they look like... The characters on yeah, playing cards. That's the idea. That's insane. I know. Nobody looks like those characters. No. Like it's... those those playing card figures are like bizarre yeah, cartoons. <laughs> yeah, but These this are is people. a comic book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like we can draw them exactly like that. Okay. So true. The league is like, oh my god, like Booster Gold's getting his ass kicked by the entire Royal Flesh Gang. What are we gonna hmm. do? Batman's like, release the dome. So they they, oh, no. they drop a dome over the headquarters and the area around them oh. so that the Royal Flesh Gang can't escape and hurt innocents. Okay. And so they're like, let's see how Booster Gold handles it. You know what? Tryouts. Right, why not? Impromptu tryouts. Max Lord probably arranged the whole goddamn thing anyway, so let's just play into it. Yep. Booster defeats them and then he like looks up at where the headquarters is and he sees the League is there applauding him. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> Like, why didn't you help me? Yeah, you were there the whole time? Please, it's the Royal Flush. Yeah. I'm not gonna sully my cape doing this. Even Captain Marvel could have beat him. So, uh, Batman's, hey. but I love Batman standing there because he looks down at Booster Gold and then he smiles like, well done, Booster Gold. <laughs> well done, Booster Gold. <laughs> now get out. Now get the fuck out. <laughs> I didn't change my answer. Yeah. But, uh, but Booster Gold is so, like, excited that he doesn't notice that Ace. Oh. 
the last and biggest and most baddest ass. <laughs> he doesn't uh, notice the biggest one. Mm-hmm. The He's ace in the hole. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's how it goes. So uh, ace attacks. He's basically like a like a like an uh, like a super adaptoid kind of thing. Like he can. He's got contingencies for all the other league. Uh, oh, he's like Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the tryouts are over. Now the league just steps in, and then they all team up and they fight uh, yeah. Ace and they destroy him. Okay. They destroy him. He's a robot. Ah. So uh, what... the rest of them are real people, though. I take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. They were just defeated. Exactly. He was. They were destroyed. They were. He will be rebuilt. Yes. They were beaten into unconsciousness. <laughs> so. Uh, they all like lick their wounds and they hang out in the uh, you know in the headquarters and Maxwell Lord immediately like went outside and he's like ladies and gentlemen the Justice League including Booster Gold and Batman's like well we have no control over this situation so like every situation we're in yep. so you know I guess that's it I Max mean, Lord is the, our well Max Lord Lord is now our like point of contact yep well it would be more embarrassing to like to go, try well, no, to correct see it. what happened was this random guy just snuck in to our headquarters and then just declared himself our liaison <laughs> how could you let that happen we don't really have a good security system. <laughs> what? You're the Justice League. Meanwhile, the Joker's like, you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, fuck Joker. He doesn't give a shit. The Penguin is like, you don't say. <laughs> Ooh. Someone who needs this. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Penguin needs this. <laughs> Penguin needs this. I could take it on the whole Justice League. It's just a well-placed grenade. So, uh, Dr. Fate, uh, you know, is defeated off screen. Oh, by whom? By whom indeed? Oh. Gray Man. Meanwhile, uh, so then Gr- Gray Man launches his nefarious scheme. Uh, he has captured Dr. Fate because he's basically like, Dr. Fate is a representative of the Lords of Order and Chaos. So Dr. Fate is kind of like, in ch- he's his parole officer. Ah. And so, uh, you know, the gray man's like, fuck Dr. Fate. So he captures Dr. Fate and he holds him as a prisoner. And he's like, guess what I'm going to do? Uh, you couldn't because no one would. And uh, <laughs> he hatches his plan. And the plan is he's going to make duplicates of himself and they are going to take over Stone Ridge, Vermont. Oh. One, one step at a time. How's that going to help him? <laughs> Has he, does he need to get off that island? Is that where the Ben and Jerry's is located? Well, Dear God, no! He, he, what his plan is, is he's going to make the duplicates affect every single member of the town, and they're going to steal their dreams and turn them into gray men and give their the color and dreams of theirs into the gray man, and he'll become more powerful and free himself. I see. So today, Stonington... Uh, Stone Ridge. Stone Ridge. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow the world. The world, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. So... <laughs> Meanwhile, the League is doing way more important things. Like, mm. Guy has taken his penis out and he's measuring it against Batman's. Oh, uh, so, how's that going for him? Uh, not well. <laughs> well, As we're can, not going to be able to see that book. No, uh, it's, that, that, yeah, that's, that's a black label book. <laughs> so, Guy Gardner's like, fuck you, Batman. I've had enough of your bullshit. Hey, man. You know, I had man. one rule when I started this team and it was no booster gold. <laughs> <laughs> and what do I see? Booster gold! gold. So. You're welcome to leave. Yeah, you're welcome to go. Damn it. There's the door. Fuck you, no I won't. Call the bluff. <laughs> so, but this is this is the most iconic moment of the book. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Guy Gardner has been whinging and complaining and arguing. And by the way, he also like has been publicly endorsing Ronald Reagan in this book. Oh. He shows you the political leanings of the people who are writing it. <laughs> but uh, Batman is just like so sick of Guy. And he's like, Guy, bring it on. And Guy's like, Yes! Finally! <laughs> So he takes his ring off and he hands it to Blue Beetle. I want Batman to be like, you better keep the ring on or I will destroy you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. Yeah, you need the handicap. <laughs> this is in the t- days of year one. But uh, he hands, uh, Guy hands his ring to Blue Beetle for safekeeping. Mm. And fucking Captain Marvel is like, Batman, don't engage him. This is a horrible precedent you're setting. It's mm. really inappropriate. Right, you're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to take him up on these. <laughs> and Batman's like, I do what I want. <laughs> Captain Whitebread, shut the fuck up! Like, he doesn't say right. Captain Whitebread, but he, but he might like... as well. <laughs> Why don't you okay. sit down, you little boy? So, yeah. I know your secret. So Batman is just like, alright guy, you, you say you got something to tell me, bring it on. What you got? What's up? And they just start <laughs> circling each other? Yeah. What's up? What's go up? ahead, hey, make yeah, your move. You, Come on, do? Come on. <laughs> go ahead, do it. He's yelling about all the things you're gonna do to Batman. You know, I'm gonna break your legs and break your arms. I'm gonna kill your parents! Batman's <laughs> <laughs> like, the magic words, he, just, he just turns around, he leaves, <laughs> and then the whole headquarters explodes. <laughs> uh, so he, uh, yeah, Batman goes, "Oh, you're all bark and no bite." And Guy goes, "Oh, I bite," which is, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Guy yeah, Gardner, that's a great line. Yeah, Batman goes, "Like, yeah, I know you do." Ha ha ha. Like, <laughs> but uh, Guy Gardner goes, "I bite," and he rears back for a punch, and Batman just goes, 
<laughs> the guy's gone. Yes. It just says bonk. Bonk <laughs> down. <laughs> he's just and he's unconscious oh for my. the rest of the issue. <laughs> Yeah, I did to him what I do to, to guys all the time yeah. so that they don't become a problem later in the right. fight. I hit him yeah. so hard, he doesn't get up for real I look at time. him, I know exactly what a center of mass is, I know how much he weighs, I've got him. Yeah. He took the ring off. Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. What <an> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> give me that ring. Who else wants some? <laughs> and that Nobody was else? my plan the whole goddamn yeah. <laughs> time. Fly away. Now I'm going to go join Superman and Wonder Woman and the other cool people. <laughs> Later, losers. Black Canary comes in. She's like, what happened? Why is guy on the floor? I missed it. Oh, I can't ah. believe I missed it. Because he's been sexually harassing me for the entire yes. series. Yep. And we don't have an HR department. Who so, am I complaining to? I guess Batman. I guess Batman's the HR department. Yeah. But uh, Blue Beetle, of course, like he reels back in, 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 in delight. Oh, okay. I thought what? he was going to be like, what have you done? And he goes, one punch. And one punch. He's crying. There's literally That's Maguire actually awesome. manages to draw Blue Beetle reach Just under like... his mask <laughs> to wipe away tears of joy. That's awesome. And Batman goes, "Okay, now that Marsh Manhunter's here, we can begin the meeting." Everyone's yeah. just totally cool with it. Yeah, they just leave him on the floor. They just leave him there. This will be called back to, you know, story I think written by Jeff Johns, where it shows you like the history of the Justice League, mm -hmm. and it shows you just like snapshots of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman dealing with the various versions of the League throughout history. And the, the basically, John's, I think, retcons that Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman always have secret meetings every generation or every year uh -huh. during this era as well. Okay. And they, they just... They stay in touch. Yeah, but they don't join the League or anything. Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's, there's this great back and forth where it's in the middle of the conversation and Superman's like... I can't believe you punched him. Why did you punch Guy? You know it's just going to make him more of an asshole. And Batman's like, he asked for it. What do you want from me? <laughs> and uh, and they, they have this, and Wonder Woman's like, oh my God. Like, that's that's not okay. But like, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of great. It's kind of great. Like, Clark, come on. And they, they and, 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 and Superman just goes, can you show me what it was? Can you, can you show me what it was like? <laughs> and they recreate the panel of Guy rearing back and Batman going, it was like this. <laughs> It's just so cute. I'm like, that's, yes. That's awesome. That, and this, and that wouldn't exist without this book. And not just the callback, but also like the camaraderie of the heroes and the, mm. the behind the scenes stuff. That's right. the, Everybody hates God. And they no. bond over how much they hate God. This yeah. was, this was the writers bonding over this. Yeah. Right? They're having a great time. Like everyone yeah. in DC is just like, oh, finally. Right. But like, why? Why invent him if you hate him so much? <laughs> Dr. Fate contacts them by becoming the computer and just, the, the computer becomes a mouth that's like, you gotta go to Vermont. And they're like, holy fucking shit man don't throw your magic Jeez. crap at me like that Freaking this terrifying. is just an email yeah. from the future uh, meanwhile uh, Captain Marvel's like fuck this Batman tells him like you can you can reconnoiter uh huh <gasps> I say that because reconnoiter is a word that means to go scout around and find out information and yeah. I learned that in like 6th grade vocabulary mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was like there's no context in humanity where people say let's reconnoiter <laughs> You were just, no. Just, no. No. You just I don't say, to know that just, just say go look around. Scout yeah. around. People don't talk that People way. People don't talk that way. And then I saw the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> and one of the first commands that Riker gives aboard the Enterprise is, let's reconnoiter. And I'm like, no! <laughs> and, nerd! <laughs> and Batman says it too. Yep. And I'm like, fuck. I think... <laughs> It's like a military thing. It is. Like, yeah. you would say it if you were, or you would have thought it was normal if yeah. you would join the military. That's how we get reconnaissance, is through reconnoitering. Yeah. True. Yeah, but Sal, growing up. As a child, as a child you don't put it in a sixth grade vocabulary book. <laughs> yes, you run reconnaissance. <laughs> right. So, uh, Captain Marvel uh, goes to reconnoiter the area. Uh-huh. Well, uh, reconnoiter, reconnoiter your ass. Uh, and when they land, they bump into the creeper. Uh, and the cre oh. yeah, and the creeper's like, "Hey, I'm insane. I'm freakazoid." No. Uh, and he's Ugh. fun. I, oh, okay. I, I like the creeper because he is like insane and he looks neat. He, he has a cool design. He's a, he has a cool design, yeah. and and it like uh, by all rights it shouldn't work. Mm. And for many people it doesn't. I mean, ah. he looks like a very crazy version of Mr. Miracle. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, color the colors. Exactly. Yeah. He looks like if Mr. Miracle were the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But he's uh, bouncing around. Yeah. But the creeper, well, because Jack Ryder <laughs> was. <laughs> Jack Ryder was there. Let me creep up on you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually a kind of apt, a forward-thinking nickname for him. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Jack Ryder was at the location when the Gray Man struck, so he became the Creeper. And mm. So the Creeper can't, like, explain to them anything in clear detail, so they have oh. to, like, go through the adventure, but we also put Creeper in here. Ah, uh, so they need him. Wait, is Creeper a, a good guy? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, he's always been a good guy. Oh. And only in the New 52 do they try to, like, you know, anti-hero villain oh, him I up. I just assumed he was bad guy. Yeah, look he's at him. called the Creeper. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I guess that's a... The, the, the fact that that's a bad thing is like a newer No, thing. because no. there's a movie in like from like the... There's a noir film from the 40s. Oh. Called... called well, actually it's called The Brute Man, but The Brute Man is called The Creeper in oh, the movie. Right. Anyway. Right. So Captain Marvel's caught, caught by the Gray Man, and now he just puts his action figure next to the other one. Mm. Was that the town yeah. in Vermont? Yeah, that was... Yeah. Bur- yeah, the uh, Stone, 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 Stone Ridge. Stone Ridge. Stone Ridge, Vermont. But what it's been happened all, it's to been it? All it looks modified. like it got turned into dinosaur bones. Yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. It's, it's fucking cool looking now. It's because the, the, the townsfolk's dreams have turned to nightmares and the, and, and the gray man's feeding off of them. Mm. It's a bunch of magic crap. It doesn't really matter. The point mm. is... Magic stuff's happening in this town. The this point town's is, in trouble. Yeah. So, uh, gray man, you know, he possesses Captain Marvel and he uses Captain Marvel against the League. Mm. Uh, kicks the crap out of them. Oh, look, he's got gray hair. He yeah. turns his face. That's right. Well, because he's the gray man. No. Cool. Um... So, uh, Dr. Fate plays mind games with the Gray Man, because Gray Man's, like, got a strain to use, like, his ability to mo- make multiples, mm-hmm. spiritual multiples of himself, uh, to control all these people in the town, uh. and so, like, now, now he's controlling Captain Marvel, and he's really strong and stuff, so Dr. Fate's like, oh, you're losing it, and so he does, and he frees Captain Marvel, but not before, uh, Captain Martian Manhunter just kicks the crap out of him and uppercuts him into a wall. Oh, so he's down for the count. He's 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 out. Mm. But we still get some levity because he's Captain Marvel. Uh huh. Is it really you? Uh huh. I'm sorry. I was dazed. I didn't notice I, the shift in minds. Did I hurt you? Uh huh. <laughs> and then he falls asleep. And it's like oh, <laughs> and everyone's like, Sean, what what did you do? I learned it from watching Batman. <laughs> this is how we resolve things, right? <laughs> yeah, I punch you. <laughs> Creeper leads the league to the movie theater where the Gray Man has set up base, mm. and they just ca- they just see. Gray Man and Dr. Fader just doing are just having a magic fight. Nice. And they're like, there's there's literally nothing we can do about this. Yeah. You know, it'd be like a it, well, it, I guess I'll get some popcorn. Just showed up in uh, in in the tower, just saw Gandalf and Sarah just whipping nothing at each other. You're like, <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to do in this situation? While they're fighting, Gray Man sends all of the duplicates of himself to fight the League. Oh. They do. Uh, but they're, they're duplicates. All... We can murder them. <laughs> well, they're, yes, but also. It's safe. But also, like, they're, you know, they can reach into you and, like, take Wait, your... are these the townsfolk? Oh, right, no, take your dreams. No, no, these are just the duplicates. No, they're okay. physically just new beings that he brought into existence. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah they fight so them. there's a fight. Yep. Cool. Yep, they fight them. And, uh... Don't let them take your dreams. That's right. Or turn them to nightmares or whatever, however it works. Uh, yeah. Or touch you. <laughs> yes. So they fight them, and then Dr. Fate, of course, like, wins. Uh, Dr. Fate basically uh, re- wins by going, like, okay, so, full disclosure, I could have beat you at any point, but, like, I felt bad for you. Ah. Uh, so anyway, you're in a box now. I let you take over, like, a whole town and convert it to nightmare buildings and stuff. Yes. And capture me. To, like... Yes, because I thought you needed help. To like, help to help you. Well, no. Let I you allowed this get... horrible disaster to occur. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. Well, no. You know, no one died. And nothing yeah. Get it out of your system. Right. Yeah. Well, or at the very uh, least, like we'll find out what you really want and maybe right. you get to the bottom of this. But like, uh, you're just an asshole. Right. So and now, those people, they're they're just normal people. Yes. They're, they're ants. Right. Who cares? We're about heroes. That? Yeah. So <laughs> while uh, the Justice League is like licking their wounds for the fourth adventure in their flagship series. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guy Gardner wakes up on the floor and he's like, I can't believe the freaking Batman Lucky Punch. Where's my stupid Lucky ring? Punch. Oh, that's what right. What the hell day is it? <laughs> I, oh my God, that's right. Blue Beetle like dropped my ring and it fell over here and it like it like bounced into like a, a like an air shaft. Mm-hmm. So he, cla- he like crawls on his hands Didn't and knees. did it fly to him like the first time he got it? Can't he just call it to him? He, no. Lame. No, you can't do that. I think only Kyle can do that. 
Mm, is that a new thing that happens when Kyle? It's, it's a it's a 30-year-old thing from now. Well, I mean, <laughs> new <laughs> Then it would be a new thing. When, when he did it, it was new. It, it was so original. when Kyle did it, yes. Yeah. So we could totally space balls this up and, like, have Darth Helmet grab him and be like, put her there. Oh, I got your ring. Oh, yeah. you're lame. Yeah. <laughs> so Guy's on his hands and knees uh, in this air shaft trying to find a ring. A, uh, a, a rat took it. <laughs> and so he takes it from the rat. The rat bites him. And when it bites him, he hits his head on the air shaft and then falls unconscious again. Oh, uh, my God. And after this, he will be, like, baby man boy, nice person, Guy Gardner. Oh. That personality will take over. But from the hit, from hitting his head on the... Wow. From hitting his head on the air shaft, not from the not from... sucker punch for Batman. Right. No, no, Batman didn't... Batman did not Batman change didn't Guy wreck Gardner. Him. Yeah, no, that was a punch to the nose. Yeah. This is a hit on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Batman's so punch was harmless. Batman's punches don't damage people for life. Right. Please. Yeah, <laughs> let's not have that be canon. <laughs> oh my god, every person he's knocked out is suddenly a... Yeah, Joker's <laughs> like, I'll kill you, Batman. Batman. Bam. I love you, Batman. <laughs> Bam. I'll kill you. Uh, Dr. Fate, uh, you know, he's he puts the kibosh and everything. And then the Lords of Chaos and Order, uh, in, in the form of this blob, up here, And they're mm. like, Gray Man, you, 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 you really overstepped your bounds this time, pal. <laughs> And he's like, I am the great amoeba of the universe. You he, will listen. Yeah, and he's like, uh, uh, it was Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate made me do it. And they're like, please, that's so lame. He tried to help you or something. Yeah, and then they go, the, the fact was, you know, your, your, your punishment wasn't really a punishment at all. Like, you wanted to know how we work and stuff, so we gave you a job that is part of serving the Lords of Chaos Nord. We thought it was helping you out. Like, we thought it was something you wanted. And then he's like, what? And they're like, yeah, sorry. If you don't like that, RB. And he's like, yeah, no, I don't like that. And they're like, oh, well, then we'll just rescind it. And he's like, please do it, please. And they're like, okay. And they vaporize him. Oh. What? That's rescinding it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's amazing. I Damn. guess he saw too much. So then Dr. Fate <laughs> is like, okay, fuck this. And he just sends everybody back. He's like, all right, let's go. Well, that was pretty messed up, huh? Anyway, uh, am I in the league now, too? I'm Dr. Fate. <laughs> no, he doesn't want to be on this team. No. He's just nearby when their adventures happen. Yep. Sometimes. That's right. Or at least that one adventure anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so Creeper leaves. He's like, thanks for having me in the book too. Bye. And they get on the bug and they leave. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was pretty messed up. So, I took a giant dump in your bug. <laughs> uh, Maxwell Lord arranges for a meeting at the UN for the Justice League. And it's the whole Justice League International plan. Right. Where it's like, you're going to be sanctioned by the UN. You get to, you know, you, we won't have the, the nine hour layover in the bug anymore. Yeah. You'll just go. Uh, that that was the impetus for Justice League International that yeah, one that was a, time. It was when an they, example of uh, you know how, of how, the problems that can happen if you're not officially sanctioned. Yeah. Plus, like I'm gonna be the person that talks to the UN for you guys. Exactly. You're welcome. Right. I'll be your yeah. liaison. Precisely. You need one of those. Yeah. And uh, it needs the, the 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 job needs pushing, which Maxwell Lord is more than happy to provide. Mm. Uh, you know, he does like television interviews. Uh, and he strong arms, or maybe John does it. It's kind of nebulous as to who actually encourages Superman. But Superman goes to Reagan, and he's like, I endorse this plan. I'll never be on this team, but I do trust them enough to be the Justice League. Oh. So you need to sign off on this. Uh, it's also kind of funny. Oh, I don't know, Superman. <laughs> Literally that? Like, Superman shows up, and he's like, Reagan's like, nice to meet you, Superman. He goes, we've met three times. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I, 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 oh, the old Gipper's memory's not, not <laughs> what, what it used, used to, to be. be. Oh, okay. Uh, we're almost there. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. <sighs> so then, a like computer screen somewhere mm. is like the league is not being accepted by the media. So the, the screen says that. Yeah, like there's a computer, like running this. That like Max Lord is taking his. Ideas from or his marching orders from a computer. Okay. Oh. And so the computer is like, taking into consideration media hostility, the chance of the Just League International being ratified is nil. I'm going to have to go to plan B. And plan B is there is a big Death Star orbiting Earth and they fire a death laser at the Earth and it's just firing. It's just, just, and it's just, just on. So like they just flip a switch and there's just a death ray firing at the Earth. And they're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta move. So the Justice League has to, like, spring into action. We're Superman! 
He is fucking busy. I am talking to the president. I'm talking to the president of the United States of America. Justice League, can't you handle that death ray? Why do I have to deal with every death? You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not this gonna. one's yours. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 I other just vouched do. for you. So it's carving a path, but it's carving a path towards America's nuclear weapons. So Star Labs Wait, hooks up the League. It's a giant laser. Why didn't it just fire at the nuclear strike right away? No, <laughs> well, because it's because it's a Machiavellian plan to show how useful the Justice League is. Right. So the Justice League, the is this the this is Maxwell this is the Ward computer. firing yeah. the laser? Well, it, well no, no, uh, because no. Max finds out about it while he's like trying to do damage control. He's uh, he's talking to people. He's trying to manipulate the events to get the Justice League ratified. And then Hal. And then like there's a laser, and he's like, oh, Hal, shit. I need you to turn the laser off. <laughs> He's not working with Hal. Well, he's referencing 2001. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Space Odyssey. <laughs> That's funny because Max and Hal literally shared a scene in this book. So Star Labs hooks them up with a, with a, with a spaceship. They all get in their, in their space suits. And uh, <laughs> this would take hours. Superman can just fly up there. No, it's a Star Labs space. Uh, oh, it's already ready. Ship. It's ready to go. It's ready to go and just, it's very fast. Just walk over and yep. get in it. So they fire okay. rockets at it and, uh, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> This is amazing. But uh, but Mr. Miracle notices that it like looks like apocalyptic technology. Oh. So Batman like springs into action with a plan of attack that whizzes it in record time. Nobody fucking follows anything. It doesn't work very well. Hmm. And uh, looks like the thing shoots a bunch of missiles at him. It shoots like projectiles. Oh. And wow. they notice that there's a camera mounted on the like Death Star, and they're like, "Why is there a camera?" And of course, the camera's there to film their heroic deeds. Ah. Uh. Um, and Batman realizes that like they've been set up, and this whole thing is like an elaborate ruse. Uh, Mr. It's B- elaborate ruse, other than the giant death later well, that's scraping I mean, across the a, earth. It's a ruse that's causing a lot of damage. Yeah, it but is. It's still the ruse. It is still a ruse. And I, I project that it will not destroy its target. That's right. It will shut off if we don't do anything. Well, Mr. Miracle recognizes it because because. Okay. Because it's a trap. Batman puts it together because his helmet breaks and he doesn't die. What? That like the the the, the vessel itself might be it has, like, responsible. Around it? Yeah, or it's like creating an atmosphere. They don't explain it. Uh, that Never just guessed. goes around Batman. And so Batman's like, none of us have come to harm by engaging the Death Star. Mm. And like, like I should absolutely be fucking dead. Right. So this it's, thing it's set up so that we can't fail exactly yeah and Mr. Miracle's like I recognize this so he jumps into the beam and they're like Mr. Miracle died and it's the first time they think Mr. Miracle died in this book nah. uh, so but no I escaped to death yeah well what he what he realizes is like this is an apocalyptic and like this is a training orb oh. and like it is meant to cause damage to like environment but, but not, not to the people being trained uh. and it will like go out of its way to protect the trainees. I see. It's what killing the all these people, people down on the ground. ground. It's only just breaking the ground. Yeah. It's not killing There's anybody. No it's not what a about the fish area. that are in the ocean? Well, the who animals gives a on the shit land. About those fish. Right. What are you talking about? So <laughs> nobody cares, Ben. Right. Yeah. So it shuts off, and uh, you know they all they 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 all mourn Scott, and then Scott's like, "Who are we crying about?" Uh, so then it's Indiana Jones. Yeah. When he comes home. When he comes up. Yeah. So that did it. Yay! Yay! Now and now the UN, UN's on board. Yep. And the did, UN. Did the is, UN say, "Where was Superman?" They don't. No. No. They don't care. Do uh, they ask any questions about how nope. they defeated it? Nope. We just jump cut. All right. But uh, does the, anyone ask about how they got the footage? No. 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 So uh, <laughs> again, jump cut. So the UN has a couple of ideas. They want Captain Adam on the team. So Captain Adam becomes a member of the Justice League. Oh. Uh, okay, and he hasn't been in this whole book. What the hell? No. No, he's, no. He's that, an this is, this is like the the country mm-hmm. is like, oh, we want a, we want a military guy. Yes. And yeah. uh, so the and the USSR, of course, responds. So right. Rocket like, Red. Oh, well, we get a military guy too. Yep, so Rocket Red becomes a member of the Justice League. And, uh, and Batman's like, I quit. This sucks. He <laughs> yeah. does not quit. Uh, this is becoming Yet? not something I want. <laughs> right? To be part of, yeah. And so Maxwell Lord like comes in. He's like, "Okay, guys, like you're all like we're at the UN. You're in the waiting room. We're gonna we're gonna unveil you." And Batman's like, "Yeah, no, I am I am diminishing my role to part time status. Like, if you need shit, give me a call. Mm. Maybe Alfred will answer. Like that's and sign up to be part of like a government agency. I'm supposed to be like borderline mythic, and I'm on fucking camera in a spacesuit fighting a death laser. So no, <laughs> right." Plus Doesn't Gotham exactly is like fear falling apart. To Gotham. Yeah, well, I, I haven't been there. So then uh, they all stand for a picture that like nobody takes. 
of the team. Cool. Uh, showcasing there's a lot of them. Yeah. Because they it's the same number of, as before, but they just added like two people. Well, I guess mm-hmm. Batman's leaving. Batman's leaving. But he's in the picture. Captain Marvel's leaving. Okay. Batman's even scowling in the back, being like, I don't want to be this. Yeah. Sucks. It's, so yeah. for like a brief moment in time, all these people were on the Justice League, but immediately thereafter, right it here. was very different. This is the moment. <laughs> it's, it's funny because like this is a pretty like sophisticated story. Yeah. And then you have invasion happening afterwards. Which is, oh my which God. is like goofy, Uncomplicated. insane, stupid, yes, but, straightforward uh, as alien As a result story. of that, uh, you know, because they launch the bomb that makes people, that makes the metagene activated, yes. Maxwell Lord becomes a telepath. Oh. And he keeps that, or does that go away? He keeps that. Okay. Is he like flaunting it, being like, "Now I'm really oh, part of the Maxwell team. Lord. Now Maxwell Lord's gonna kick some ass. No. I'm gonna control your minds and shit. No, nah, well, so you don't you even need John here then. anymore. I'll be your communicator. Well, oh. and then and then it turns out like because they didn't really know what they were doing with the with the, with the computer plot. Oh yeah, uh, what, what what was up with that? Yeah, uh, Maxwell Lord is in bed with a computer program called Kilgore. Okay. I'm sorry. Kilgore. Kilgore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was fine with this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, what are you talking about? That's a totally normal name. Yep. And uh, is it know, an acronym for something? No. In fact, the O is a percentage sign. So uh, Max like <laughs> dies or becomes a robot and then dies. Like the fact is, Max dies and comes back to life a couple times. And uh, hmm. you know, at one point he's a robot. But this is the introduction of like, all these characters. Yeah. Uh, and the, the 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 tone of Justice League, which will immediately go away when everyone who works on this book does. Mm. Uh, which you know, yeah. Uh, but I don't know. For for my money, it's it's a fun little adventure that is like if if you if that doesn't appeal to you, it is it is work to right. read this book. Yeah. Uh, or the continuing books because it will it, it'll it'll the problem is the book will sell very well and they'll get to do more of what they want uh. and what they want is to have more hijinks and silly adventures right. and so it will get more and more madcap. Which will just alienate more and more readers. Mm. I think the trouble I have with this is it doesn't seem like a cohesive story. It's not. Well, it's not. It's straight up not. It's it's literally supposed to be like a like a behind the scenes documentary about what it's like to to yeah. be on the Justice League. Well, it's Except also, it's not even that because all we see is really them have a very forgettable adventure, and then and then we just get to see them go back to the base. Right. And what do they do when they're at the base? Bitch and moan at each other. Right. But you do get to see that. Yeah, and you get to a see that. A little bit more than you did in, in prior And, books. of right. course, like, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle will become fast friends after mm, this. Right. And that... W- and then clearly, Demetrius and Giffen are like, oh, well, these are our favorite characters. So, like, the book will be more about yeah. them and what they're up to and their private lives. They're going to introduce two more f- female characters, Fire and Ice. What the they're hell join happened the team. with the weird superheroes that came from, like, <laughs> that wanted to... Take out oh, nuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah. From the well, other... one of them died or not, and the other two fucked off. <laughs> yeah, weren't they? Go- wasn't their mission to like destroy all the nuclear weapons because they destroyed their world? So they're like, we yeah. gotta get rid of all of them here. Yeah, but they didn't. And yeah, they, they just stopped. Yeah. They depower one nuclear plant. Yep, and yep. then that, and that like, was oh, over. Shit. Oh shit! It got real. It got real. I mean, like they lived through the nuclear holocaust that killed all of humanity, and they out they like outlived it. Right. So they were just living on a desolate wasteland of like. Of nothing, right? So I mean, being here, you know, it's like, oh well, I guess I'll just like become an accountant or something. Like, right, okay. right. Well, th- they came in like all hot and heavy with this idea, like, oh, we gotta get rid of all the nukes, we gotta get rid of the nukes, yeah. and then like, oh they- shit, there's still a Wendy's here, <laughs> guys, guys, we can forget about forget <laughs> that nuke thing. <laughs> I gotta get the crispy chicken sandwich right now. Yeah, th- th- really, that was just. <sighs> oh. Oh. I've needed this for years. Oh, Blue Jay, we gotta get back to the, into, the, into the fray. <laughs> hmm. Yes. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> what? Would you like a frosty? <laughs> no. Use the fries. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens to them. Yeah. Yeah. We just wreck on that book. Yeah, they stop uh, at Wendy's. They, Wendy's. Uh, yeah. They immediately well, give up. It just seems like they just they just have a second to think about it and they realize like, oh, that was that was a dumb plan. Yeah. We well, can't and just, I we guess can't just destroy. All, oh, oh, those planets covered in nuclear weapons. They're, right. We can't possibly stop nope. them all. And like we tried to stop them in like one small, you know, Eastern yeah. European country. We almost, country and we almost ruined everything. <laughs> yep. I guess uh, I guess the nuclear problem is a little more complicated than that. Right. <laughs> I guess you, you can't just have like three superpowered beings like just just fix it. Justice League International or Justice League or Justice, Justice League, League New Beginning. Road yeah. to Justice League International. That's right. Yes. Uh, we'll never do another chapter of this saga. 
Uh, oh, was I right? Did you did you did you hate it, or was it like did I don't you recognize it. the the value? I don't hate it. I probably would if I read it. Yes, but uh, the bullet points is like oh, okay. The banter I is it. but it's, it's fun. It's from an era when like they didn't do like these huge story arcs. Yeah, yeah. and it actually does have an arc like at all. So right. like it, take what you give it. Yeah, there's a know. structure to it, and <laughs> it, it does like happen. There is continuity from one. To another book to the next, but it is still like no, no. These are separate books. Like it's you gotta be able to pick up this book and read a complete story. Yeah, it does seem like it's jerking all over the place from one to the next. It but does. the fact that there's any through line is like at this time, like okay. Yeah, I guess the question was, did they have a, a an idea of where to go from the beginning? No. And in, <laughs> yeah, in my head, I would say no. Straight up no. And no, if they, they just, keep running. They're just like, I think we know where we're going. The editor didn't know who was on the team or who was gonna make it. Like. You know, it was just the guy who kept bugging me about doing it, I did it. Like, I, I told him to do it. Yeah. And he did, made uh, it up as he went. And he didn't even want to do it when he found it he did it. So he got somebody else to help do it, too. There, there will be an inevitable trade somewhere below. Buy it. Uh, and if, if you're at all <laughs> curious about Justice League, I would say check it out. It's, it's a seminal piece and something that, like, no one references anymore. Mm. It's something that people hearken back to and reference in terms of, like, tone mm. or want to. Although, honestly, I haven't seen that in a long time in a Justice League comic. Mm. But uh, if you want to be able to push your glasses up and say, um, actually, people, pick up Pick up book. Justice League International. And listen, like, the, the fact is, it paved the way for your superheroes to behave like human beings. Because <laughs> mm. like before they were people. all, hello. Yeah, well, yeah. and even, even, the, even the facial expressions, which, again, McGuire's a master class at showing you, like, what a human face looks like when it makes that expression. Yep. Uh, and and it's it's not just the face. It's not like their bodies suck, but the faces are great. Like it's it's all good. It's just yeah. like it, it infuses. It, it, you forget how much character can be seen in that way, yeah. and how much character you don't normally see in your superhero. Yeah, you really don't. This this is very impressive yeah. looking through this. I want to see uh, McGuire like in front of a mirror, just practicing these things like. Exactly. There's no way he's not doing that. Oh, definitely. He has to. It's too accurate. Yeah. I actually, I, I've been thinking about getting a commission from him. Yeah? Just, it's like, draw Superman looking smug. <laughs> like, yeah, I just and he would do it, and it would look like that. And it would look like that. Yeah. I kind of want to see that. Yeah. But uh, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm glad that uh, we enjoyed it. Like, yeah. We had fun. Yeah. Uh, so, yay. Woo. Yeah, I don't hate this episode. Hey, hey. Or Yeah, no. Good. It does go off the rails. That's why we're not going any further. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped here. Well, yeah, exactly. it, we know it goes off the rails because uh, Superman gets killed like Doomsday. These guys are in the clock. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, but they're not yucking it up while Doomsday's mopping the floor with their asses. <laughs>